Hello viewers, my name is Harrison and I am starting a short series of tutorials on SketchUp to document uh, my workflow, my process, and pass my uh, methods on to you. Um, these are extremely helpful for using SketchUp to make um, draftings, to pre-visualize things in scale and in 3D. I primarily use SketchUp to um, make 3D mock-ups of sets, which is exactly what this project is. This is for a play that I'm building a small set for, and it's still in the design phase, so I think it'll make the perfect example for a tutorial on how I make my SketchUp models. All right, so let's jump right in with just a little more short overview. And as you can see over here, I have the construction mock-up of it. So each of these is an individual piece. These represent one by four, you know, standard pine boards. Uh, these, the Luan plywood. Um, the jacks again, everything's built to scale and based off real life uh, lumber which is probably uh, another lesson to be had there is you know familiarizing yourself with real world dimensions of material materials and how uh, you know once you have a grasp of you know oh plywood comes in 4 by 8 i'm using you know 1 by 4 boards and you know that then you learn that those are actually not one by four and you know those are just nominal and and the actual dimensions are you know uh three and three quarters by three quarters by you know whatever um so that that helps a lot uh in streamlining any kind of workflow is you know uh one of the greatest advantages of sketchup is working in scale so that's what the basis of this tutorial is going to be about. It's going to be about learning how to make real world representations of actual building materials and how to piece those together in an intuitive way to make a complete 3D model. Okay, so starting this project from the beginning, I have the finished work here. So you can look at it for reference or whatever. When you first open SketchUp, let me just start by how I like to work. Uh, I do think it is part of the workflow and just to make things easier. When you first open SketchUp, you might be greeted by this uh, cartoony kind of thing, you know, a little helper. These are fun, these are useful, whatever. I usually get rid of it, I don't need it. Uh, the next thing I do is I go to Window, I go to styles and in styles there's different uh, viewing styles so my favorite out of all these is probably construction documentation styles just makes everything plain white and black and high contrast just so everything doesn't really you know blend in these outdoor ones have their place if you're using an outside renderer like uh, podium or Indiglo or whatever is around. I don't mess with those because I don't have money for that. But if you use one of those, these do have their place. Um, wireframe comes in handy as well if you're doing uh, construction drawings that you're actually gonna print out for someone um, and you need to show some hidden lines or, or what have you. Um, but construction documentation style is usually my go-to. And just like that. Uh, the next thing I do is I get rid of the axes, I go into view, and I don't really want to see those. They kind of distract me and get in my way. I like this blank white void uh, quite a lot. It's just nice blank and big, and I can start populating things how I want them. You know, you might want the axes just to start something because uh, you can get lost in the orientation of things so you know they do come in handy for that but on the whole uh, once I get a drawing going I do get them out of the way just because they they distract me quite a bit so 
The next lesson in SketchUp is make sure you have your large tool palette out. It's my favorite. Uh, it's got all the shortcuts you need. Uh, if you're handy with the keyboard shortcuts, more power to you. But me, I use a mouse, and I recommend a mouse for SketchUp 100%. I think it's a game changer. If you're using a trackpad, or if they still make laptops with the little red fuzzy ball from the 90s uh, in there, if you're using one of those, and you like it, more power to you. If you think SketchUp's difficult and you get lost a lot, uh, I recommend the mouse because uh, with the uh, track wheel in the middle, uh, that takes care of all your orbiting, zooming, and if you hold shift and click the, uh, the mouse wheel, you also get the pan. These orbiting tools make SketchUp a lot easier if you know if you're getting lost in models a lot, or if you're you know you get stuck or backed out. I see people have the problem all the time, and then, you know it's frustrating or whatever. I see them; they're using a trackpad, and I'm like, just get a mouse. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier, and then you can just bang out SketchUp models super fast. And uh, if I have to do it without a mouse. Um, like I said, you got to get handy with the keyboard shortcuts, and uh, that'll that'll probably make it easier for you. But I don't really memorize them. So uh, we have the axes up to get started. Uh, again, I'm building this in scale because that's really what makes SketchUp a useful program. If you're not building in scale, you have a nice drawing essentially. But when you're you know, actually putting in the dimensions and lengths of things, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, uh, it's what turns this into a construction, you know, computer-aided drafting program, and actually gives it some value for being free. So I just made an eight-foot-long line. I know that I'm going to be using eight-foot one-by-fours. And then I'm just typing in the dimensions for each of these. Uh, I always draw out the rectangles as opposed to the rectangle tool. That's just me because I always have trouble with the rectangle thing, not, not making the rectangle in the angle or the size or whatever. I always just see it's faster just to draw my shape exactly how I want it, especially if I want to turn it right away. And I want to draw it a certain way rather than have the computer make that rectangle for me. So the axes are good. It's also good to have an object um, if you don't have a finished square like this. Um, you can just make one real quick. But it's always good to have something, in my opinion, to grasp onto for your rotating. So right now I have this timber. And actually before I rotate it, I'm going to do one last thing. Uh, right here is your main component. Uh, that's how you make each of these an individual piece that is not going to glue or interfere or uh, become attached. If you just draw the whole thing out at once, it might be easier for you to think that way, but when you can actually think in the pieces, this makes uh, it a lot more, this makes a lot more streamlined and a lot more sense making your individual pieces. So like I said, you know, I draw your rectangle out, make your boards. Now you have a component. And then now you can press the move. Alt. And I'm using a Mac and I'm not sure if on Windows Alt is the same, but it's either Alt or Command. I'm pretty sure it's Alt. Move. Click Alt. Click on your component. And then you can, that makes a copy of it that you are then going to place wherever you want with the, with the next click. So I'm just going to move this one over here. So now I have these two. I'm going to make another copy of one of these. And I'm going to click on this bottom half. Well, actually, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to click on this bottom half. And I'm going to make sure that this is snapping to the blue axis because I want it to be directly on top. It just makes it easier when I copy it. And then I'm just going to put 
an eight foot length on that. I think it's an eight foot and three quarters technically because it's copied from the bottom or something, but eventually I do want this distance to be exactly eight feet. See, it's six foot seven, 11, which is actually perfect because I think from this top to this bottom, it's eight feet. Ah, see, it's eight feet and three quarters. So I'm gonna fix that. And the reason I want it to be exactly eight feet is because the plywood that I'm facing the frame with is exactly eight feet tall. So if I had this taller than eight feet, the plywood would, wouldn't actually be able to be nailed onto the frame because the frame would be three quarters of an inch taller than the piece of plywood. And that would really piss me off a lot if that happened. That's a rookie mistake if you do that. Forget to compensate for your cuts, which SketchUp will help you make sure you do that because it forces you, if you're doing my method, um, it forces you to have the correct length of, of board in scale. So again, I have my piece, which is here just for me to snap onto while I'm rotating things. So I got my rotating tool out. And I'm making sure that uh, I'm level with the green axis on this in this case, just so I make sure I get a clean 90 degree uh, turn. And then again, use your snaps; they're great, they're perfect, exactly what you need. Um, and now I got this piece vertical the way I want it. I'm going to make another copy of it. And again, that's move, Alt, click on the piece, and then uh, click again to move in place wherever you want. So right over here, I'm gonna snap it onto the end. And then remember, I made sure the space between these two boards was exactly eight feet. So as you can see, this original eight foot is now taller than the actual piece because it's resting three quarters of an inch above the bottom. So just a quick fix for that is while it's selected, uh, I pick scale and I scale the piece down vertically. And the reason I did that, instead of editing the component itself to be shorter, which you could do, uh, is it would have changed that dimension on all components, unless you copied it and saved it as a separate component. So it's just easier to scale down one individual component than to just keep going in that fashion, making duplicate components and copying and pasting all the time. So right now we have the standard rectangle. That's the outline of the uh, flat. I'm not gonna get into flat construction in depth. Uh, I guess not the real world application of it since that would be a whole different video and that's more woodworking than it is theoretical rendering. But I'll see if I can't touch on it a little bit. Um, so right now, before I start putting in my cross bracing on this uh, frame, I'm going to turn it into a group. And up here, that's Edit, Make Group. I think alternatively, you can right click. Yeah, right click, you could have made a group or something. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm going to move it away from this stuff. Just give me a little more room. And then so now, uh, it's like a component, but not. I really don't know what the difference is. I guess this is less permanent. Components kind of more saved, but they still function exactly the same way. And I mean, it's not like I can't duplicate this exactly. It would just be another group as opposed to a component. I'm going to move this piece over here again. And then uh, instead of using the rotating tool itself, once a piece is a component and you have the move tool selected, it actually has its own rotating points built into it now. Um, if you want to get super advanced, there's ways to mess with the anchoring or where the axes themselves are positioned and then that changes how the piece itself will rotate if you want if you really want to get into something like that but I don't um, so I'm gonna snap to the midpoint 
I'm going to find my midpoint section again on this uh, piece. And then I'm going to double check that. Measure twice, cut once, right? And that's exactly four feet. I want that right in the middle. And then again, so if you're lazy, you can just leave it like this. You know it's overlapping and if you're going to remember that you're going to need to cut that down when you assemble this in real life, um, more power to you. That's good. That's good. I don't have to teach you that. But if you're a beginner or first timer, just make everything you know, perfect in SketchUp. So you have a perfect representation when you go into the real world. Snaps are your friend. Get to love them, get to learn them. Uh, the reason this piece is facing this way, not vertically this way, here's your woodworking uh, uh, tips, is because when I'm going to face this with Luan plywood, the seam is going to run right down the middle. And so this is only three quarters of an inch thick. So that would be a very small area. You know, they basically have to share, you know, what, a couple sixteenths of an inch on each side to them to get nailed together. But if I have this whole, you know, three and a half inch uh, sized uh, flat surface, you know, they just have more to nail onto. Uh, 